If you're gonna be running tracks on stage with Ableton Live, you should be running tracks in Arrangement View. Now, I've talked many, many times before and included some links in the description of this video explaining why I think that is. But one of the first hurdles and roadblocks you're gonna run into in using tracks in Arrangement View is this. Now, one of the best features of Arrangement View is the ability for me to double click on, uh, let's say like my verse here, let's solo our click just for a second, uh, double click on my verse and I can hear um, my verse going and I can choose to jump, let's jump to our bridge here if we want to. I can jump around and navigate my entire song uh, using what's called locators. And locators are these little flags, these little markers in Ableton Live that show me exactly where each song section is. So as opposed to having to chop up clips in session view to get to my song sections, I have access to them immediately in Ableton Live's range of view. But here's where our problem comes in. Let's say I go to build an Ableton Live set. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to um, my templates folder. I'm gonna open my free track template, which you can download if you're interested in this. You can head to from studio to stage.com slash template to download this free template. Just drop in your name and your email there and you can grab that. Uh, I've got my track template open. I'm ready to build my set. So I'm gonna go to my desktop here and I have this Battle Belongs Locators file set up. I'm gonna drag that in uh, and let's take a look at what comes in with it. So we'll clean this file up a little bit. Uh, we'll uh, group this back up. And I look here and huh, interesting. My locators did not come with my song file. Um, this is a downside to using Arrangement View is you add locators in your file and when you go to drag them into another file, uh, drag one Ableton session into another session, your locators don't come with it. And this is a question I get often from people is, hey, how can I have Ableton Live save my song section so when I load it in to another Ableton set, they're gonna come along with it. Well, uh, one, again, unfortunately, Live doesn't natively do that. But let's take a look back at this file. Uh, see this track here? This is called a markers track. What I want to show you in this video is how to create a markers track uh, so that you can save your song sections in Ableton Live to, to match your file so that the next time you go to drag your file into an Ableton Live session, uh, if you choose to add locators, uh, it's a really quick process to re-add them. In fact, you can even have Ableton automatically add them back in for you. But that's a whole nother video for another day. Um, uh, but even if you don't add your locators in, you could still get the Freeman flexibility to click on a song section uh, and to jump specifically to that song section if you want to, which is really cool. So let's dive in. Let's talk about how to make this happen. So I think in order to do this, let's go back to the song we were working with before here. Okay. So this is Battle Belongs. You can see I've already got locators added to my file. If you've never add lo uh, lo added locators to your song section before, uh, then you can right click anywhere on a measure that you want. Uh, click add locator and you can name that whatever you would like. Okay. So I'm going to delete that because I actually don't need that one. I'm going to go ahead and solo the click so that my stems don't accidentally play and YouTube fusses at me for playing monetized content. But you could see here in my song section, um, uh, in, in this session, I have a markers track. I'm gonna delete that, and I know that's a little scary, but I'm gonna show you from scratch how I create a markers track. Again, if you download that free track template, which is from studiosage.com slash template, uh, you'll get a head start on this process. So what we're gonna do is either use our template or do Command Shift T to create a MIDI track. We need a MIDI track, okay? Command Shift T or Control Shift T if you're on a PC. And then we're gonna rename this track. So we click on the track and we do Command R to rename it. And we're gonna call it Markers, okay? So now with the Markers track unfolded, so if it's not unfolded, click the arrow to the left of the word Markers here. We're gonna unfold that. We're gonna go to the end of our song. So all the way at the end of our song, and we're gonna click and drag all the way to the beginning, okay? Then we're gonna do Command Shift M. Okay, or control shift M if you're on a PC. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these locators as, as kind of a reference point here. So for this first one, um, so it's before my intro, I would call this a count off. I'm gonna just click on my MIDI clip. So right up here, so see how we go from a mouse to this little hand. I'm gonna click up here and do command R, again, control R if you're on a PC, and I'm gonna call this count off, okay? I prefer to keep this all caps, but you could do whatever you want to. Then I'm going to click right where this locator is, right where the, the locator intersects with the MIDI clip I created. And I'm going to do Command E. Okay. So Command E or Control E if you're on a Mac, uh, Control E if you're on a PC. And I'm going to click right arrow. Okay. And then Command R to rename this clip. And so I'm going to do intro. Okay. So now 
I'm going to click all option. So that's, that's one key on a Mac, all option in right arrow. Okay. And that's going to jump me to my next locator. And then I'm going to perform that keyboard shortcut process again. Now this is the same process that we're just going to repeat over and over and over. So here's what our process looks like when we're on a locator, which I'm on a locator. Now I'm going to do command E and then right arrow. Okay. And you can see that takes me off of that locator command R to rename. All right. And then I'm going to do option, the option key, all option key. And I'm going to do right arrow, which jumps me to my next locator. And then we do that whole cycle again. So what's our cycle again? Command E, right arrow, command R, and we're going to rename. Now, in this case, it's the verse as well. So I'm just going to hit return to keep the verse the same name. Now the cycle again, all option to our next locator. And then we start over. Command D, right arrow, command R to rename type our name in all option right arrow to get to our next section what i like about this too is if your song file already has locators added in it and, and you don't like what uh that particular producer uh that if you bought the stems from a website you don't like what they named it you can rename it so for uh in this example right here this locator is called turnaround i don't want to call it turnaround so i'm going to split it command d at right arrow command r and i'm just going to say turn okay and then option right arrow. Okay. So you're going to work your way throughout your entire song. Uh, I call this, um, this is kind of like the, the Netflix type work that you just do while you're sitting there, uh, watching a show. It's, it's kind of mindless. Uh, it becomes a good, uh, especially if you've had a stressful day or something that you're just like, I, I just need kind of a break kind of deal. Uh, this type of work, I, I personally find slightly relaxing and Maybe that says something weird about my personality, but um, I'm going to just go through again and, and just finish this out because we're almost there. So outro then our final one here is end. Okay. Then I'm going to hit save so that this is saved in my song file. Um, now the final thing, and, and this is super important that all my songs match. So I'm going to go back to my, um, my finder here, my browser rather, and we're going to go back to where our template is. We want to go to templates and we want to double check that our file format is exactly the same. So we're looking for click tempo guide markers. Okay. So I'm going to drag markers up there and then we have original track and there's original track. So now I'm going to hit save. So now this is all the same file structure. So let's go back to our template, uh, open our free tracks template here and uh, let's close uh, up our browser and uh, I'm going to do file save as so command shift S and I'm going to call this Will's set. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to Live's browser. I'm going to go to my desktop and up here, Battle Belongs Locator. I'm going to drag this right in. Okay. We'll close our browser back up. Uh, let's click R to get rid of our return tracks. Let's group this up. And you'll notice what I have here, and I'm going to delete, delete these locators. We'll move locator two in place as if it was song two. Okay. Um, and I'm going to take leave uh, this content here. I'm going to take this content here and just move this up. Okay. So I just click up here, type one to jump over and then paste that in and I can delete these, these extra files here. So now I have all these locators, these song sections um, added into my song. So uh, what I want to do is I really have two options here um, or three options. Option one is just leave this the way it is. And if I want to jump to the intro again, let's solo our click. So YouTube doesn't yell at us. Let's say we want to jump to our intro. I'm going to click on this marker. So I'm actually clicking here. I'm going to press space bar that jumps me to the intro. If I want to jump to the verse, click on the verse, press space bar. Now it's going to start me right on the verse. Um, but I like to have the freedom and flexibility to jump around, repeat song sections. So what I'll typically do at this point is I will go through and I'll add a locator. So you could go manually add locators. I don't add names at this point in, in the process. Um, I just would, would go through and just manually add locators in if I wanted to. And then this would give me the ability to double click uh, on a verse. To get there, I could use previous locator uh, to jump around previous uh, previous or next locator to navigate my entire song. Uh, I use I've talked about this before. Uh, I've used this this MIDI controller quite often. This is the Oak Tone Oakboard Mini. Um, real simple control: play, stop, previous, and next, and that gives me all the control that um, that uh, one guy should ever have in Ableton Live. But that allows me to jump around my song. Now, the third possible way to do this is to actually have Ableton Live re-add locators back into your Ableton Live set for you. But in order to learn how to do that, you've got to become an Ableton Live uh, or from studio to stage student. And you'll learn to have um, uh, Ableton Live do some really cool things for you 
automatically and learn to use tracks in a very efficient way. I've included a link in the description of this video um, so you can check out the program, see the different benefits that you get when you become a From Studio to Stage student. But if you're not ready for that yet, and before you even do that, if this is the first time you've watched a video about using Ableton Live, you're getting started with Ableton Live, here's what I would rather you do. I would rather you head to from studio to stage.com slash template Download that free track template, start using it to format your songs so that you can start to learn what I call and teach as the three-part framework for using tracks. And you'll learn to format your songs efficiently. You'll learn how to build sets efficiently, build sets in a way that's stable and in a way that gives you freedom and flexibility using little tricks like the tempo track. We learned that last week, uh, using little tricks like the markers track, which we learned this week is going to allow you to do all those things really, really simply. And then again, once you get that down, or if you want some support throughout the way, or just want encouragement as you're going, as well as lots of other really cool things, then you can check out from studio to stage, uh, and consider becoming a subscriber. Now I post new content every single day here on the YouTube channel. If you're interested in this sort of content using live on stage to perform with, um, then click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you're notified when that content comes out. And what I love about that is load the YouTube app on your phone. You'll get a notification that says, hey, from studio to stage posted a new video. And if it connects with you, if the title works and sounds like something you're interested in, then you can click through and watch out that, watch that video. And if not, then skip it. And you can catch the next one, 10 a.m. Central the next day. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you on a future video. Take care, bye.